Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah. Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. Under 20 total carbs, because that's how I do it. How do you do your keto or your carnivore? Do you have a special formula that just seems to work for you? Do you track, weigh, measure? Do you do any of those sort of things? Well, guess what? Today is Black freaking Friday. Black Friday. Is it black because you overindulged yesterday? Or is it a Black Friday because the retail merchants want you to buy, 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 spend, 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 get into debt? <laughs> but if it's Black Friday because all the promises you made yourself yesterday got kind of chipped away at and you kind of figured, well, just this one day, I'll just do it. The pressure's too much. I knew I had, had anxiety going in, but, and resolve, but yeah, it didn't quite happen the way that I hoped it would. So today, as you're watching this with your cup of coffee, how is your resolve? Are you getting back on track today? Do you know how important that is? You know when they say you fall off the horse, you have to get back on, or you just develop this fear? Is that one of those sort of days that you've got going now? You need to be very, very careful because I know from my, this, this is just my experience. If I had a slip up on a day, this was way back when recognizing I was a food addict. But if I had slip ups, then I knew that to have a slip up one day is one thing. To have a slip up yesterday and then today it's looking the same. That's really, it, it's more dangerous than the first day to me. Because once you get into that daily little something, something, and they start, they one day builds into the next, builds into the next, and your resolve is like washed away, it's really kind of serious because your head now says, I don't care. And I'll catch this again later. And it wasn't really that bad. And I don't have to tell anybody anyway. And what the heck, I've lost 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds anyway. So if I have a little gain this season, it's okay. That is very arrogant thinking. And it's also very um, naive thinking because you might not come back when you think you can. It doesn't work that way. What I want you to do, if you had a rough patch, maybe Wednesday night into Thanksgiving and there was some slippage and this could be day two or three, what I want you to think of is how disgusted and self-loathing and remorseful and wanting to crawl into a hole and come back out in February, you felt when you entered into the food plan that you're doing now or another food plan that has tweaked along the way and you've remained abstinent and very disciplined and very dedicated to it. Remember back then when you felt as bad as you did Maybe that moment that you stepped on the scale, moments of reckoning for a lot of us, where it's like, oh my, this isn't happening to me, is it? That shame, that disgust, all of those things that you felt that day that you said, this is it. I'm doing something about it today. I've been skirting people's videos about how they track, weigh, measure, do keto, even go back to Weight Watchers, I've been following all of that for a while now, and I just haven't done it myself. But now here it is. I'm into the middle of my, I went from Halloween candy slippage, and now here I am on Black Friday, and I've already got a number of these black X's on my calendar of when I didn't have nice, clean, abstinent days. You know what? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean. So when is the time to hop back on and take care of yourself? Is it today? Is it putting in your foods for the day? If you were one meal a day and you were kind of like doing okay and you started to mess up a little bit and have a little snacky snack before or after, things like that, how about going to two meals a day through this season? Whatever holds you in place or maybe two meals a day when you're surrounded by people in your house or you're in somebody else's house or you're out of your element. How about two meals a day? So you can just kind of hold on to that. 
because I'd rather see you saying, okay, two meals a day for the next couple of weeks or month or six weeks or whatever, whatever, how long your food season is for your particular lifestyle, and then go back to or aiming back to that nice one meal a day. Or if you're two meals a day, how about th having three? Just to get you through this, because I like, as I started to say, and then I, you know, digressed, surprised, aren't you? If you say, okay, two meals a day, what does two meals a day look like to you? Maybe having, you know, your coffee fatty or black or however you have your coffee when you wake up, and then maybe around 11 or 12, having that one meal that is like very high protein, maybe high fat, like a sausage, couple of eggs, piece of cheese, maybe some avocado, something like that, that's going to hold you, you know, say you usually eat at like four or five when you're having your OMAD. And now with all these people around, you know, you have to kind of wait. They want to have cocktails. They want to have nibblies. They want to do all the stuff that like is very, di very difficult to be around, right? And today is Black Friday. So a lot of people are going to be expending all this energy doing all of these bags of stuff and shopping online, submit order, and all that kind of stuff. And then everybody meets back again, you know, towards the late afternoon for cocktails, appetizers, you know, what appetizers you didn't fit in on Thursday, you're going to have today because it's Black Friday, that sort of stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, the normal standard American diet on a holiday weekend, not just the day anymore. It's like the oh, weekend. And so you're going to sit around, you're going to watch people have their their cocktails. You had your cocktails yesterday. Does that mean you're going to have them again today? Well, I don't know. See, this is where you need to be very, very clear of your agenda of your food and drink for the next few days, especially if you're surrounded by people, like I said, out of your element, not alone, when you would usually have your alone reflective times. Like right now, having your cup of coffee saying, I hear what she's saying, it is kind of hard. And then people start eating at six and people eat and nibble while they're cooking. Maybe it's, maybe it's leftovers from Thanksgiving. Maybe it's a whole new meal. Who knows? Well, hopefully you do. And you had your, your high protein, high fat first meal of the day. And so now you're getting a little rumbly for the next and all of the stuff's going on around you. You don't want to have appetizers. You don't want to have more cocktails or, or wines or beers. You don't want to have more of what you had yesterday because yesterday you kind of said, I'm just going to have what I want. I'm not going to track. I'm not going to weigh. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to pretend I'm just a regular old American celebrating Thanksgiving. And it was kind of messy. And the borders were kind of like, you know, crossed over and it just, it wasn't very clean. And so today you've got a chance of making it clean. If you're watching me now before anybody else wakes up and gets rolling and you can be safe, you need to be safe. You know, I, I understand how people, you know, have a very hard time doing this because they're surrounded and everything seems like a good idea. And it's tradition. And it's like, ooh, so be safe. Remember, Dr. Jason Fung says no, period, snacking, period, ever, period. And if you've already been around this keto community for a number of months, maybe years, you already know the drill. But giving it up for these few days, you know, it's like a diabetic. Does a diabetic take Thanksgiving weekend off? Heck no. So you need to take care of yourself. And if you think it's silly and funny and not that big of a deal, well, okay, <laughs> if that's how you feel, I don't feel that way. I feel every day is just important as the next. And so safety for you with your food is what I try to talk about, especially on a day like today, when the whole Thanksgiving thing can be carried over with more food, maybe more drinking, you know, let's throw in shopping and it gets very, very blurred. And um, I, I don't do well with things like that. And I don't know about you, but I want you to be safe. And, you know, maybe tracking and weighing and measuring is a little bit too much to be doing with an audience that has, and they have mouths. Like, why do you have to do that? You already lost your weight. <laughs> 
You do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And nobody asked for, you know, the judges to be impaneled behind you with their comments about how you conduct your food program. For a lot of people like me, it's it's been game over for decades. I'm a recovering food addict and I can't get away with any of it. No matter what Ms. Slick tells my head, it's game over and I know that. So having a bunch of people behind me be either, you know, that criticizing, that compliment hid in a missile, like you've already lost the weight, why don't you just enjoy yourself? God, you're so obsessed with that stuff. Who needs any of that? I don't, and I bet you guys don't either. And that's when they all come to roost. They're all hanging out at the house till Sunday afternoon. Please go home now, please. I know you're supposed to, your flight is at six. Let me drop you off at the airport at noon, <laughs> right? So be safe, be careful. Black Friday for me, a recovering food addict could be very, very black if I allow it. And I don't want to allow it. I want to be safe. I need to do what I need to do to protect the integrity of my food program that I've had up until now. Just remember, think of a diabetic. A diabetic doesn't take off Black Friday. A diabetic has to be even more careful surrounded by all the fun, the hop in the car, the drive here, the drive there, the drive trap, driving in traffic, the stopping at fast food places because we're so busy shopping that we don't have a break. Calm it down, lay out what you're gonna have. My suggestion is, is a heavily focused, high fat, high protein, no carb, first meal of the day, second meal of the day, hang on, do what you need to do, whether it's carnivore, or whatever keto program you have, maybe with a little salad, some veggies, something like that. But be mindful, know what you're gonna have. Don't get in there and take a spoonful of this and a slice of that and a drink of that and think, okay, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday I'll get back on track. Well, that, that could be day three or even day four of slipping and you don't wanna have that. So you need to be very, very mindful I'm here. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's my son's wedding on the 24th. And um, we will do what we have to do to get there safely. Nothing, nothing will ever taste or feel as good as laying your head on the pillow, knowing you made it through another food minefield with family, friends, and loved ones with opinions. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Black Friday!